We are working our way down through QuickBooks and we're on Module 3 now, which is where we're going to talk a lot about how to customize the QuickBooks environment. We're going to start off in Section 1 here talking about the preferences. There are a lot of options in QuickBooks that you can turn on or off just to make life a lot easier for you and that's kind of what I want to address here in the preferences. There are two parts to the preferences so you want to make sure you watch this particular section and also part two of this section as well. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and I'll show you where these preferences are. The preferences in QuickBooks are basically just options. There's a lot of these in here. I'm not going to have time to look at every single one of these. I'm going to try to address the ones that I think will be most important for you. Once you're finished watching the video, go back through and look at all of the preferences and see if there's some that we didn't discuss that maybe you want to change some options for. The way you're going to find the preferences is they're listed under the Edit option on the menu down to Preferences. The way the preferences window is set up is you're going to see these groups over on the left and typically when you come in it's under this general grouping. For each grouping on the left you're going to see some options under the My Preferences tab and also some under the Company Preferences tab. So make sure to click both to see all of the options. I'm going to start with Accounting on the left here and I'm going to click on Company Preferences. There's a few here that you will definitely want to consider. The first one is using account numbers. Let me cancel out of this and just show you something. I keep saying that the chart of accounts is the most important thing in QuickBooks and that's listed right here on your home screen. Everything you do in QuickBooks will relate back to one of these no matter what it is. We're going to spend more time in section 3 talking about the chart of accounts but for now I want you to notice that the list is set up in alphabetical order by type. What I mean is if you look for example at all these expense accounts right here, these are alphabetical. Some people like to use what they call general ledger numbers. That's a number that refers to each of these accounts. Here's what it will look like if I go back to the preferences and turn these on. I'm going back to edit, preferences. Again I'm under accounting and the company preferences tab. I'm going to check the box, use account numbers, and click OK. And what you're going to see now is next to each of these you have what's called a general ledger number. Auto QuickBooks will automatically assign this number, so if you don't want to use the number it assigns, you do have the ability to edit these by right-clicking and choosing the Edit option, and then you can go in and change that number to whatever you want it to be. But this option turns the general ledger numbers on. Let me go back to the Preferences again. I'm still under accounting, going back to company preferences, and I want to point out this use class tracking for transactions option. Not all companies will use this feature, but it's really great if you need a way to break your company down into sections for reporting purposes. For example, let's say that your business has a couple of different locations. You might actually use that as your class list. What would happen is if you check this box, every screen you're on will have an additional field that says class. You'll click the down arrow and you can pick the class from the list. Right now you can run a report on the whole company and you can see how the company is doing but you don't have the way to see how a particular location is doing and that would be an option to use for your locations. Those of you that have the online version you have the class tracking option here but you also have one called locations. So you actually have two ways to kind of break yours down. Another option here that you'll want to be aware of is the date through which the books are closed. If you know anything about accounting, in true accounting you close the books at the end of the month and then you close the books at the end of the year. Here's what this means. Let's say I've closed the books through September of this year. It's now October and I happen to notice a change that I need to make in a prior period, meaning prior to the end of September. Let's say it was a bill you entered twice. You're not going to be able to go back and just delete that bill, but you can make an offsetting entry in the current period. That's the correct way to do accounting. However, you're going to find that most small business owners who are using QuickBooks, they do not know this option even exists or how to use it, so I don't find a lot of them that actually do this. 
but if you're going to close your books then you're going to click here set a date and a password to close the books through and that way it will warn you if you try to make a change in that close period you would have to know the password in order to make that change Going down the list on the left, I'm going to skip all the way down to General, and I'm going to the My Preferences tab. You definitely want to turn this one here on. It says pressing Enter to move between your fields. What happens often is when you set up your QuickBooks file, you start typing a transaction, let's just say an invoice for example, and when you hit the Enter key, you hear a little beep, and then all of a sudden the screen disappears, and you go, what happened? What happened is your enter key is the same thing as save and close. If you're wanting to use enter to move back and forth between the fields, you're going to want to check this box here and then it'll make life a lot easier for you. A lot of these options are things like do you want it to beep when it records a transaction? You can kind of see these choices. You may want to choose this one, automatically recall last transaction for this name. What that means is let's say that you wrote a check and you wrote it out to pay your electric bill. You would have put in the name of your electric company there. You would have filled out some information in the memo line. You would have chosen an account. There's a lot of things that you would have put on that particular check that you're writing. Wouldn't it be nice the next time you wrote a check, if you put that same vendor name in, it pulls all the information from the last time and then you just change anything you need to change? makes life a lot easier when you're using that particular option. Also, you want to use today's date as default. That just means that every transaction will have the current to date on it and you change it if you need to. I'm going to go down the list on the left, items and inventory. When you start making some of these changes, it will ask you if you want to save them. So I'm going to say yes here. Again, I'm under items and inventory and I'm going to the company preferences tab. One of the things that it asked us about in the Easy Step interview was, do you actually use inventory or want to use the inventory feature? If you had said no, then none of these options would be available and you also wouldn't see icons for those on the home screen. So if you need those options, you're going to come here and choose them and turn them on. Also if you use purchase orders, this is where you're going to be turning on the purchase order feature right here. The next option down on the left says Jobs and Estimates. Notice I'm on the Company Preferences tab. For those of you who actually work with jobs, construction is a prime example, then you may want to track if the job is pending, it's been awarded, in progress. You can change the terminology for these if you have different words that you use. Also, it asked us in the Easy Step interview if we wanted to create estimates, and we could say yes or no here to change that. It also asks us about the progress invoicing. Remember, if you create estimates, you probably do want progress invoicing. The next thing on the left here is your option that says payments. There's one quick thing I want to point out, and that is this option that says use undeposited funds as default deposit to account. What this basically means is that when you're receiving payments from a customer, it's going to put the money in an account called undeposited funds. You can actually uncheck this if you'd like it to put it in a different account automatically or if you want to choose the one you want. We'll spend more time on that when we get to the module where we talk about receiving payments from customers, so just know this is here. I also wanted to mention the online payments option. What happens is if you wanted your customers to be able to pay you online using their credit card or a bank transfer, then you can check one of these options. And what you'll do is if you check one, you'll need to enable what they call the online payments feature from Intuit to do this. Intuit actually has this feature where you can actually email an invoice to your customer, for example, and as soon as they get it and they want to pay you, they can click right there on that invoice and actually go ahead and pay you. But like I said, you would need to set that up with Intuit. The next thing on the left is your payroll and employees. In the Easy Step interview, it asked if we wanted to use the payroll feature. Here's where I would turn it on or off if I do want to use it, and maybe I said no in the beginning. And there's a lot of options here that have to do with payroll. For example, how would you like to see their names listed? Do you want them by last name, by first name? You can also go set preferences for sick time and workers comp and all this stuff up here. We're going to be talking about payroll in a later module, so we'll actually see this then. 
The next one you're going to see is reminders. All of these you have the ability to be reminded of. QuickBooks will actually remind you that you have checks to print. It will remind you you have overdue invoices and you can see this list. The way this works is if you tell it to show you the list here, then what happens is when you actually open QuickBooks, there's going to be a window that will say you have five checks to print and you have 14 invoices that are overdue and you have three bills to pay. So it's going to all be on the screen by itself and you would be able to see the detail at that point too. You can specify as well how many days ahead of time for some of these you'd like it to remind you. Going down the list under reports and graphs and I'll go ahead and save those changes. There's a few things here just to be aware of. I wanted to point out that reports are run on an accrual basis automatically in QuickBooks. If you'd like to run them on a cash basis automatically, you can change it right here. There's also some options to see aging on your reports. You can also show items by name, description, etc. on reports. So you might want to look here when you're looking for options for reports. We are pretty much out of time here for part one for the preferences. Why don't you go ahead and look over in part two and we will continue. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel. Click over there to get the complete seven hour course for QuickBooks 2018 and click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.